Hi everyone, my name is Jacinda Alia Dalal, and today I'm going to be sharing with you Lebanese arms. It looks like this. Actually, I don't really know what this movement is called. I just see a lot of Lebanese dancers like Amani or Lebanese Simon doing this movement a lot. So I call it the Lebanese arms. If anybody knows the real name for this, please comment and let me know. Before we get started, make sure you're warmed up all over the body, especially the shoulders and the upper back. To begin, we take our arms out to the side with palms facing down. Go ahead and flip one palm up, take that hand behind the head, sweep it forward, palm facing forward now, and take it down and place. And the same thing with the other arm, palm faces up, and sweep it behind, forward, and place. So we do one after the other, continuous motion. So when we do this a little bit more uh, in real context, we don't open out completely to the side. We stay up here more or less with the arms going from back to front, circling from back to front pretty much continuously. It's almost like we're swimming the freestyle with our arms just overhead with palms facing forward. So an important thing about this movement is that you don't want to be just circling from the arms. You want to be using your shoulders. So take a look at this. I'm up here. And then if I take my arms down gradually and it turns into this. So you can see it's actually my shoulders circling forward and back, forward and back. It's this motion from the back, you can see that I'm moving my scapula. And the movement initiates from the scapula and that's what's causing my arms to move. And as a result, my rib cage rotates as well. It rotates over my spine like this in a figure eight shape. For my lower body, I like to do what one of my teachers, Artemis Marat, calls the granola figure eight. It's called granola because it's everything thrown in there all at once. So it's not just moving in the x-axis, it's not just the y-axis, it's also the z-axis. So I'm taking my hips and taking it into an arc trajectory, passing through all of the points along those planes, back, up, forward, and down. To the back, up diagonal, take it forward to the front diagonal, and down, and then return to center to neutral pelvis. I'm also lifting my heels to help me lift the hips to the back diagonal, up, forward, and down. So who knew how useful math could be in dance? Sometimes you'll also hear this move being called the bow tie. So if you had a bow tie right here, you take it off, you lay it flat, and you take the two sides up, tilt them up. And what your hips are doing is that it's tracing along the edge back to front, back to front, and then tie the knot right in the center. Back to front and down. Back to front, tie in the center by pulling the belly in toward the spine, returning to neutral pelvis. So putting the upper body and the lower body together, I'm going to circle the opposite hip back, opposite shoulder back at the same time, and they come back and meet in the middle. Opposite shoulder, opposite hip, meet in the middle. So it's almost like I'm trying to bring my hip bone to meet the opposite shoulder right in the center, back and close. So my body opens and then closes in the center. Opens and close. So with the arms and swoop and swoop 
and swoop. Make sure to return to neutral pelvis when you come back into the center before changing to the other side. You can do this movement slowly for that languid, sensuous effect if the music calls for it, or you can do this fast if there's an accent in the music, or you can do this in combination. So slow, slow, quick, quick, and slow, slow, quick, quick. You can also do this movement facing the back and it looks nice and mysterious. So it looks like this. If you happen to be backlit, you will see a silhouette of yourself doing just this and it looks nice and dramatic. This movement is also very nice to do with the finger symbols. So something like this. I hope you give it a try and let me know how it goes. See you next time.